let's be honest, everyone has that one guilty pleasure reality TV show. You tune in every week, you talk with your girlfriends or your bros, and you're like, oh my God, did she get the rose last night? Did she not get the rose? What you may not realize it is that your favorite reality show could be revealing more about you mm -hmm. than you actually think. Really? All yeah. right. So we have an expert here to help us take a deeper dive into the world of reality TV, sociologist and author of True Story, What Reality TV Says About Us, mm -hmm. Danielle Lindeman. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Good morning. But first and foremost, what's your favorite reality TV yeah. show? Oh, it's so hard to pick, but I think I would say RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. We were just talking about yesterday that show. Yesterday we were talking about that, that with OG. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you write an entire book about reality TV. You're clearly a fan, and I, I'm sure it's hard to pick one. What made you decide to write this book um, other than you like reality TV? <laughs> well, I'm a sociologist, and I teach a class at Lehigh University on the sociology of reality TV where we watch episodes of reality TV and we pair them with readings in sociology to sort of better help students understand both sociology and reality TV. And so I always thought that it would actually make a great book. Yeah. Um, and so that was the kind of seed of the idea for the book. Now, of course, you know, once the cameras are brought in, the element of reality starts to change a little bit. Things may get formulated. So although it's called reality TV, is it actually real? Is everything we're seeing so spontaneous? I mean, of course it's not really real, right? It never has been. You know, it's edited, it's cut, it's reconfigured, various people are cast for the shows. So it's not a pure mirror of reality, but nothing that we create is a pure mirror of reality, right? A documentary is not a pure mirror. A newscast is not a pure mirror. You pick which stories to tell. So it's not really real, but nothing is. Right. I like that. Although, I like to think that in the news, we remember that the cameras are rolling. I feel like right. when I'm watching a reality show, I can see the minute when the character completely she's forgets go. she's mic'd and that there's a camera following her. Um, I love those minutes. Yeah. yeah. It's, I think that's what brings people in. By the way, I wish I had had a class like this. When right. I was, when so, I yeah. was, where was that in college, my exactly. God? Exactly. I wonder if we we wanted to to do a little thing with you and give you some reality show headlines, and have you sort of tell us uh, the truth behind behind all of them. Um, is that okay? Sure. She's ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. We'll start with a famous one, The Real Housewives. Yeah. So The Real Housewives can teach us about social class that social class is not just a monetary category it's not just about how money how much money you have but also about kind of your attitudes your tastes and your kind of orientation toward the world and we ridicule those who don't have the kind of appropriate kind of tastes or attitudes that we feel like should match their social class okay and it's a good lesson in, in table flipping in table it's, flipping yes very, very I table flipping as well the proper that way is, to flip that is glass. something you need to have on the top of your resume you I, I know crucial. how to properly and I should I should preface this I, I asked that question incorrectly it's what can we learn about ourselves right. from these reality shows Next one up, The Bachelorette, which I know tons of people who watch. I have never seen an episode. Nor have I. It, no. I haven't. What do we What do we get out of that? Yeah, what can't we learn from The Bachelorette? I mean, I think it's a zany show, right? But in some ways, it teaches us how we're all kind of performing gender all the time. The women on these shows perform gender in a really kind of heightened, exaggerated way, right? With the big hair and the eyelashes out to here. But we're all kind of performing gender and kind of more muted ways in our everyday lives. That it's an interesting terminology, performing gender. What is what does that mean exactly? Yeah, I mean, so we're all kind of doing these performances of gender. We're kind of acting as the gender that we identify mm. as, right? We dress like the gender we identify as, we adorn ourselves in a particular way, even the way that we talk, whether we talk loudly or quietly or how much we talk sort of influenced by cultural ideas about gender. Well, they pulled off the kilt pretty well, all those they guys. They sure I mean, did. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> uh, up next, Survivor, which is a show, oh actually, the gosh. first couple of years I did watch. Yeah. But uh, what can we get out of that one? I think we can Other figure out that Other than learning how one. to stay alive. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> learning how to stay alive. Yeah, I mean, I think who didn't watch Survivor in that first year, right? Um, I mean, I think it teaches us about the small groups in our own lives, the like groups of twos and groups of threes, mm -hmm. and kind of in groups and out groups. and 
you know, kind of like small group behavior that we deal with in our, in our daily lives, in our friend groups, in our work groups, in our family groups, those can kind of translate to survivor. Okay, I like that one. Yeah, Last one up is Catfish. Another show I didn't oh. watch. I've, wa I've seen some of these. Sometimes disturbing and, 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 you know, a little rough to watch. Yeah, it can be disturbing. Yeah, you know, and Catfish, it's all about people kind of being authentic and kind of performing as people that they're not. But I think it can show us the extent to which we're all kind of performing, like performing gender I talked about, right? But we're performing as kind of different selves across the different stages of our lives. So the way that we act around, say, our family is different from the way that we act at work, is different from the way that we act around our friends. So we're all kind of performing selves in different ways. The people on Catfish are just kind of doing it in kind of a darker, mm -hmm. I would argue, more overt kind of way. Right. This is fascinating. What's yeah. your final project and do you fail anyone in your class? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think people have failed before. No, for the final project, they sort of have to take an episode of a reality mm -hmm. show that we haven't watched for the class and make an argument about what it means about contemporary American society. I love okay. this. Maybe I'll start viewing them a little more intellectually. I'll try. Because Danielle I'll might, she <laughs> might give you a final, a final, uh, I final get a, test. Might get a B minus. Danielle, <laughs> Lindemann, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, and if you want more information, if you want to get a copy of her book, it's called True Story, What Reality TV Says About Us. You can also go to her website, daniellelindemann.com. I like this. Yeah, next time I'm channel surfing, maybe I'll, I'll give it everything a little more of a yeah. chance and see yeah. what happens. Exactly.